It's been a while since I've made a video, I thought I would. I have good news. After 12 years of smoking kind of more and more, I have not had a cigarette for about two weeks. This is helping. I'm still on it. This is a smaller one now. I was above 10 cigarettes a day, more like 20 or 25. More if I stayed up all night. <laughs> Uh, since quitting smoking, my lungs have been feeling so much better that the craving of habit, the thought of rolling up a tobacco cigarette and lighting it up and smoking it down every time I was waiting for the bus or just got off the bus or before I went to bed and as soon as I woke up, instead of doing that, the patches made the craving rather disgusting when I think about actually smoking. And better yet, even after just a few weeks, my lungs feel better. I'm not coughing as bad before I go to sleep. Like, smoking for 12 years and I've smoking more and more and more. Not a good idea. It was feeling like crap. It was bad. And, you know, like most schizophrenics, I was informed by some weird ideas about smoking. A lot of us are. And... I know a lot of people who watch my videos don't know a lot about the research on schizophrenia and various aspects of the condition and experience of the individuals and communities involved. So I'll turn to some actual scholarly research on the subject of tobacco and schizophrenia. There's lots out there, and this is representative of, you know, um, digging for more accurate, more recent research than the stories I heard in the psych ward talking to the fellow uh, patient mates, inmates, or whatever, of the wards. <laughs> anyway, um, this is from the Schizophrenia Bulletin of Oxford Journals. The title is Tobacco use among individuals with schizophrenia. What role has the tobacco industry played? The authors are Judith Prochaska, Sharon Hall, and Lisa Barrow. And they are, um, they are with the University of California. I'll read the abstract of this uh, study research into tobacco smoking and the industry of tobacco and schizophrenic experiences. Here's the abstract, the kind of summary of the contents of the study and paper that they wrote. Rates of tobacco use among individuals diagnosed with schizophrenia have been estimated as high as 80%. A variety of hypotheses have been proposed to explain the high rate of tobacco use among this vulnerable group. This study examined the tobacco industry's efforts to establish and promulgate beliefs about schizophrenic individuals' need to smoke and the hazards of quitting. The current study analyzed previously secret tobacco industry documents. The initial search was conducted during January to July of 2005 in the Legacy Tobacco Documents Library. The search yielded 280 records dating from 1955 to 2004. Documents indicate the tobacco industry monitored or directly funded research supporting the idea that individuals with schizophrenia were less susceptible to the harms of tobacco and that they needed tobacco as self-medication. The tobacco industry promoted smoking in psychiatric settings by providing cigarettes and supporting efforts to block hospital smoking bans. The tobacco industry engaged in a variety of direct and indirect efforts that likely contributed to the slowed decline in smoking prevalence in schizophrenia via slowing nicotine dependence treatment development for this population and slowing the rate of policy implementation vis-a-vis -vis smoking bans on psychiatric units. Uh, the medical jargon that they were using in those last sentences that might be a bit complex. Basically, the tobacco industry engaged in a variety of efforts that slowed the efforts to help schizophrenics stop smoking or smoke less and even 
to increase the amount that schizophrenics smoked by directly providing cigarettes. I remember one nurse um, in the psych ward I went at, he said, uh, it was really funny because I was chain smoking when I was in the psych ward and I had, um, there were cigarettes provided for me, not by the hospital at that time, only 10 years ago, but, and six years ago, but, uh, I had cigarettes and I was chain smoking and one and this nurse he said smoke if you got them at one point and that's definitely an old <laughs> phrase smoke if you got them it's great but uh yeah that it's a really interesting article the link is in the description of the video for tobacco use among individuals with schizophrenia what role has the tobacco industry played anyway it's uh good subject to learn about. I feel great not smoking. Um, it's all over Google about tobacco and quitting and emotional effects, the continuation of smoking and how we're regulating our emotional affect. That's one of the reasons I'm all jumpy and agitated and sound like I'm a mile a minute speech and everything. That's the anxiety and irritability and restlessness of nicotine and nicotine withdrawal. <laughs> it's great. It's uh, the headaches and anxiety and everything in the pamphlet on the patch information talks about these side effects or symptoms might be the result of either nicotine or nicotine withdrawal. It's just a weird habit that the emotional regulation, the habit of going out at a specific time and smoking, it's really just money in the back of the pocket of the tobacco industry. And that's why they would do things like spend lots of their budget on research and development into ways to make one population smoke. I'll read the first paragraph of the introduction of this uh, paper. Um, Individuals with mental illness are one of the largest remaining groups of smokers, accounting for 44% to 46% of cigarettes sold in the United States. That's a U.S. study, University of California. Anyway, this equates to 180 billion cigarettes or 37 billion in tobacco industry sales. Tobacco use is particularly prevalent among individuals diagnosed with schizophrenia with estimates ranging from 49% to 80%. A variety of hypotheses have been proposed to explain the high rate of tobacco use among this vulnerable group. Despite a lack of compelling scientific support, beliefs prevail that individuals with schizophrenia need to smoke as a form of self-medication, that quitting smoking will worsen their psychiatric symptoms, that they cannot and do not want to quit their tobacco use, and that they may hold some special immunity from tobacco-related diseases. At some point, this is all stuff that I heard and didn't really know what to make to think of it. Some of it kind of made sense with my kind of feeling of wanting to quit at various points and that being involved with the stressful times and stuff and various things that were... It was easy to kind of... Oh, that stuff might be true, but I am glad I looked into it and worked up my urge after slowly weaning myself off Seroquel this last year and feeling my better sleeping patterns and all that, feeling more emotional activation, but having spent 10 years working on cognitive management tools to deal with my delusions and train of thought and all that stuff that getting these medications out of my system, including the tobacco industry's pharmaceutical approach. Um, I feel better, and I'm glad I'm reading these kinds of uh, essays or papers by doctors that are looking into these issues. And good luck to you in trying to quit smoking if you're a schizophrenic who smokes or if you're just a smoker and you're interested in these videos. Get that tobacco out of your system. Feel more breathe more. You know, breathing is so important to the energy flow of our body. And if we don't breathe a lot and clearly and more slowly, then 
it's dangerous. <laughs> so, I'm so glad I haven't had a cigarette for around two weeks or so. I don't think I'll start again because I really like the air. <laughs>